Hello, and welcome to this episode of Highlights from the Hill, the HCAM original series that brings you into the Hopkinton Public School System. Joining me for this episode, I have guest host, Dr. Kavanaugh, who is sitting in for Dr. McLeod today. Carol, thanks for being on our show. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, and today we're continuing our tour of the uh, educational system with a couple of other departments. We're talking to visual arts and engineering and technology. Thanks, Jim. So it is my pleasure to introduce Doug Scott and Colleen Janino. Colleen is the SML or subject matter leader mm -hmm. for visual arts and Doug works in technology and engineering. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So I think we should probably start by talking a little bit about your programming and maybe some of those standout activities that you have throughout the year, things that aren't maybe part of the regular curriculum, but things that happen beyond the regular school day. I teach at the high school, but I'm the subject matter leader for the first grade through 12th grade art teachers. So um, we offer art at the center school with first grade students. We have um, at Hopkins School and Elmwood School we have fourth through fifth grade art, and our teachers work with the teaching for artistic behavior curriculum, where students work in centers and they have choice-based learning activities. Um, up at the middle school, we have two art teachers, one specializing in digital curriculum, um, anywhere from using Photoshop to iMovie. Students learn about graphic design, they learn about photography, they learn about video editing. And up in the high school, we have an array of course offerings. Mm. Um, everything from ceramics to studio art to digital arts to our new 3D Fab Lab cross-curricular course that I share with Doug, my mm -hmm. team and I. So I'm interested in um, as, as the kids progress through the ages and go up mm -hmm. through the, the uh, school years, um, do you introduce different types of artistic materials at different levels and how does, like, how does that go? So at the younger grades, they're exposed to all different materials. Um, but as I, I guess as they progress, the materials get more sophisticated too. Okay. So where they may learn about watercolor and tempera paint, as they progress up to high school, they're using more sophisticated paints like gouache, acrylic, oil-based, um, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, or the technology increases. So they're learning um, more difficult programs or how to manipulate a digital SLR at the high school versus a point shoot camera at the middle school. Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> and uh, our program is grades six through 12. Uh, at the middle school, each middle schooler participates in engineering courses. Uh, we have energy and the environment for sixth grade. Seventh grade is design and modeling. And then we have an automation course for eighth graders, uh, which is automation, but the focus is on using robotics for automation. Uh, and then at the high school, we have a myriad of offerings. Uh, we have everything from some business courses to a uh, TV production course. We have engineering, robotics, um, you know, programming classes as well. We just added a new uh, set of uh, computer science classes for next year. Uh, and then we also offer some opportunities outside the classroom for students to participate in. And uh, we've had a good time. I mean, the students have enjoyed it. And in our second year as a program, we've seen the students take to it. So it's been a lot of fun. So robotics is an actual class it is. during the school day. Yeah, we have two offerings. We have a uh, Lego robotics course uh, and we have a team robotics course. Uh, both of those offerings are available to grades 9 through 12. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it depends on their interests and what they want to do. Uh, the team robotics course meets outside of school hours uh, for competitions, so okay. the students are required to go to some competitions on weekends. Mm -hmm. So it requires a little bit of more of a uh, time commitment. Uh, and that also coincides with our club activity after school for team robotics. And the reason we did that was if we had students that were involved in, let's say, band during mm -hmm. the daytime, they didn't have time for other courses, that didn't fit their schedule, they could come after school and still participate. Or if we had athletes that had after school activities mm -hmm. uh, and they couldn't do it after school, they could do it during the school day. So we tried to set it up where if you want to do this, you can do it. And it's a, again, it's like, you know, I was talking recently to Colleen about uh, my drawing skills. Yeah. And I said, you know, oh, I can't draw. And, and she and uh, Sterling, uh, another teacher at the school, both said, oh, you can draw, you know. 
And, and that's typically the statement we give as well with anything like robotics. It sometimes can be intimidating to students, but if you want to dedicate some time to it and you want to learn it, you can. Mm -hmm. So it's not something, because we always get the statement, I've never built a robot before. And you go, well, yeah, like a lot of people haven't. Right. But if you want to, you can take the time to learn how, and anybody can do it. And it's really neat because the first time you see a student do something like that, and mm -hmm. it's true of all our courses, the first time they accomplish something on their own, they get really excited. Yeah. And they get hooked. Yeah. yeah. Are the, are, is the high school courses geared towards the competition? Like you do VEX, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or do you do other kind of robots or other kind of things? Yeah. Post I, take up? Right now we're kind of doing an experimental time. Uh, the students finished up their, their projects uh, for the VEX season. Mm -hmm. And right now they're testing out different types of systems uh, in anticipation for next year. They just want to try and do different things that yeah. they've read about or seen and they want to experiment and kind of push their skill sets, so it's something we don't discourage. Okay. And then the, uh, the Lego robotics class, uh, that has competitions within the classroom. Mm -hmm. And oh. those are an assortment of competitions that those students do. I yeah. see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. So you have both recently run some evening programs that have been very well attended mm -hmm. and very successful. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about the art show from last week, and maybe, Doug, you could talk about the STEAM night that we held at Elmwood. Sure. Sure. So we um, kicked off our annual all-school art show last Thursday, the 18th. All-school meaning? All-school. So this uh, is the third year in a row that we've featured artwork from all of the schools in the Hopkinton Public School District. So the middle school teachers um, house their artwork at the Brown Gym entrance. At the high school, we display all the high school work from both the fall and the spring semesters. Mm -hmm. And then Center, Elmwood, and Hopkins bring work up to the high school and display the student work up at the high school. Um, again, like Carol said, it was well received, mm -hmm. um, lots of people on both campuses this year. We had over 150 pieces of artwork from Hopkins School, um, 15 to 20 pieces from Center and Elmwood, and just hundreds of artwork from high school and middle school students, mm -hmm. ranging in medium, right. all, you know, all across. Sculpture, um, paintings, photography, design, you name it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that must be so much. So. Um, how else do you share that with the community? So one of the things that we produce, um, it's our 12th year of producing this catalog. This is specific to the high school, this catalog. It's called Hop Art. It's our art show magazine. Um, we have an outside person affiliated with the arts. Um, jury over about 250 to 300 pieces of student artwork. Mm -hmm. um, they write an awesome statement about what they're witnessing through this imagery and they choose their best in show about 50 to 55 pieces and yeah. um, it's published in a magazine that we yeah. put out annually and we release it the night of the art show so that's one of the ways that mm -hmm. we get the word out um, you and I did a segment before yeah. about our Twitter account yes. so um, I have the Hop Arts Twitter account that goes along with that, and several of the art teachers tweet out frequently what's going on in their art room. Yeah, I actually really enjoy looking at the Hop Arts Twitter feed because it's so cool. You just never know what you're going to see, and there's, there's so much creativity going it's on. It's helped there. really get a lot of word out to yeah. um, community members who wouldn't normally see work if their child wasn't at the high school, mm -hmm. or maybe their child didn't bring work home. Or right. It's great to see works in progress, right. capture those moments um, right. where there's student work. And, and I go around to all the schools and kind of update it yeah. um, from building to building. The other thing that I noticed, too, is I don't even know if you know how many off the top of your head, but like there's always these these gold keys and these silver keys and like all these awards that the art department gets a lot of. Yeah, so this year, I believe we received 22 state level awards. So wow. that was a mix of gold, silver, and honorable mentions mm -hmm. through the Boston Globe Scholastic Art Awards. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You have some incredibly talented students <laughs> Thank at the high you. school. Mm -hmm. yeah, Thank it's you. It's exciting to go to that art show. Thank the you. The things that you see are amazing. I was going to say most recently, um, we submit student work every year to the Congressional Art Competition, um, and we submit to the fourth district. And so for the fourth year in a row, one of our students, Sasha Hagen, won another award in photography. So it's really exciting because it's her fourth time in a row yeah. as she's graduating yeah. to be able to have that honor. Um, That's really cool. Yeah. 
And uh, recently we had a, a grade two uh, steam night at Elmwood, and that was district-wide. Uh, we participated in it from a tech and engineering standpoint. We had some students come in from the high school, uh, but there are other school, uh, groups there as well. I know uh, Val Lachansky had, um, she had some science students att attend and demonstrate their projects from the science fair. Uh, we had some students attend and what they did was they put together a little robotics challenge for younger students and they were able to teach the students how to program, you know, how to deploy the robot, get it to carry out a little task and then, uh, you know, get a sense of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And it was really well done. Uh, I think the biggest thing that came out of that night in speaking with Val and other people was the fact that you could see the high school students begin to teach what they had learned mm -hmm. and it was interesting to see them and how well they did with the youngest students right so that was really a lot of fun and you know from a standpoint of our department at the high school uh, grades 9 through 12 one of the areas of focus we've had is an increase in female enrollment in in steam classes mm -hmm. and so at that night it was really nice to see uh, a lot of younger students of uh, of different genders participating in this activity and getting that sense of accomplishment uh, that hopefully will last and you know that'll be a memory that when they come up through the grades they'll know that they can do these things so right it was a, it was a great night it was really well attended I, it was yeah yeah it was, and my memory kind of echoed yeah. vows like yeah. i was just like watching these yeah. these older students yeah. and the excitement that they had with these little kids you know yeah. getting them into these science project things was yeah. really fun to watch it was a lot of fun and uh one of the students that i had there was al wiedersham and he was a uh, a new student this year to robotics and uh it's great to see how excited he got. He, it became his senior project, and as part of his hours, he, he attended the, the STEAM night, and he was really getting into it. And I think the high school kids, for them, it's a great sense of accomplishment because they're now the experts, yep. and these little kids are looking up to them. And so that's a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and we should really point out that the STEAM program has been something that has just grown organically yeah. through teacher volunteers, mm -hmm. and it's turning out to be a program that, um, you know, really making, sure. I think, a lot of progress with, you know, bringing all the grade levels together, so yeah. it's exciting. It is, yeah. and, and what I've seen with that is, since I've been here, I've only, this is my second year here in the district, but every time that we've put something out in front of students that's STEAM related, and uh, is engaging, of high quality, and has rigor to it, the students are up for the challenge and they engage in it. And uh, so that's kind of promising because from a teacher's standpoint, anytime you see that kind of reaction, yeah. it you know, kind of encourage you to, encourages you to do more as well. Right. So it's, you can keep creating new opportunities for right. them. So it's a lot of fun. And wherever the concept came to turn STEM into STEAM, yeah. that was awesome. That was like really, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. department likes that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anytime we can weave art and design yeah. Yeah. And into that or, or demonstrate how the arts connect those things yeah. is a win for our department. Yeah. That, quite honestly, is one of the strong things that I see uh, in other interviews and in, and in this interview with your departments, it's just like the the cross pollination that goes on, mm -hmm. you know, between the different departments, and it's, it's really cool to see. Yeah, it's great because uh, I know last year, you know, we both kind of had the same idea along with Christinos, who teaches the, the Fab Lab course, which was to put together a fabrication course, and uh, you know, Colleen's fantastic to work with, and we kind of teamed up and and said, okay, let's put this course together and figure out how we do all these things. And it's nice because we're starting to see students, I was talking to Chris Enos recently, uh, she's getting students from engineering into the Fab Lab course, and then they'll probably move into some art courses, and we're seeing it the other direction as well. Yeah. And it's nice because with all these things, you need different types of students to be successful. Um, we do a project, which is a toy, uh, project toy engineering project and one of the things that the students always fail with is the aesthetics and the packaging of the product and the art students when we can get them involved I always say choose your teams and make sure you get somebody on it that has some skills in art <laughs> Beca the yeah because 
I mean, a lot of the kids can make things work, but they don't know how to actually package it. So it's like a, a you know, a, a, pack, a product that you can sell. Right. Yeah. So it's interesting. And to piggyback on that, it helps when we have students who have the technology component, mm -hmm. who have tinkered, who have made in Doug's courses. Mm -hmm. um, or the tech engineering department classes, or even down in the library in the makerspace, sure. it makes our jobs easier in terms of having to demonstrate the technology. If they already understand the tool, then they can they can create with it. That mm. it's not in the way. Mm. Um, so I see. It's true. Yeah, because we we ended up purchasing the same uh, platform for three D printing, mm -hmm. and I know this semester I was able to basically jump ahead one week because I had a number of Chris's students from from the Fab Lab course, yep. and it just jumped us way ahead, mm -hmm. so it was nice. So we often talk about English, <coughs> math, science, social studies, and really as related arts teachers, you sort of live on the periphery of those core subjects. Can you talk just a little bit about how what you offer impacts a student's day, or even maybe more largely a student's life? I start the semester, I tell my students, you know, you may not love this course, you may not even know what you, what this is when you took it. You just kind of maybe showed up here um, on your schedule. But when you leave, my hopes is that you leave with an appreciation for the things around you. I hope you leave looking at the world differently and maybe understanding how things are made or why decisions, what you know, why people make decisions when they're making products designing brochures or even just making art questioning those things mm -hmm. um, so I think in the arts we are teaching our students how to solve problems independently we're teaching them how to solve problems collaboratively um, we're getting them to talk and write about things that they maybe normally wouldn't um, and with language that they didn't know they had mm -hmm. or or weren't comfortable using in that context. So writing artist statements, um, looking at work, critiquing, things like that. And then just making something to the, yes. what comes with, the pride that comes with finishing something and having a product to show yeah. that. Yeah. And I know I joke about it, that you live in the sea wing where people make things, <laughs> but you really do make yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it is, it's a, it's a great experience for students and we have a lot of uh, common ties in that way. Uh, certainly, the problem solving is the biggest part of our department. It's the ability to solve problems, uh, to show a little bit of grit when things don't work right away. Because honestly, I, you know, nothing ever works uh, the first time out of the gates in our classes, uh, whether it be programming or robotics or you know whatever it might be. Uh, the students really do have to stick with it, mm -hmm. and from a collaborative standpoint. Uh, like Colleen had mentioned, it's huge because these are the soft skills, the ability to communicate, the ability to write as a team. And, you know, I always say, if you have a great set of skills, that's great. Uh, but until you can communicate them, you're not really able to be employed or yeah. to be able to actually utilize these in a good way. Yeah. There's a lot of intelligent people that have tremendous skills, but if they can't communicate them, they're really not helpful to anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's a huge part of it. And I always joke with the kids, uh, you know, you'll eat lunch here, you'll, you'll be here after school, you'll be here before school. And I think that's one of the differences with the things that we teach is the students really do get hooked into it. And a lot of the times they will basically live in your classroom. I, I haven't been to the teacher's calf this year uh, because every lunch block, there's students in the room that want to work on their projects. Yeah. And I don't discourage that because they're really into it, and I think it's great. I can remember doing that when I was in school in a, a wood shop. Mm -hmm. I, I lived in the wood shop where I went to school. So I, I think it's, it's nice for the students to have really something like that. Yeah. Yeah. In town. yeah. And that is certainly a tribute to the two of you that you were able to sort of inspire that passion in kids. I mean, when you've got them in the art room or mm -hmm. um, in your lab space, you know, mm -hmm. at times when they don't really need to be there, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. I think that's a, a great compliment as a teacher when, they, yes. when they're they not running out the door. <laughs> you know? So it's good ice. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a particular student that you think of um, in the way of they have just grown so markedly because of your programming? Oh. Changes in I life trajectory? So We've ha I've had students come back 
off the top of my head, I'm thinking anecdotally, mm -hmm. I've had graduates come back who left knowing they were going to pursue something else, mm -hmm. but they lived down in the art way freshman year through mm -hmm. high school year and probably in their younger years too. Mm -hmm. And they were adamant, whether it was outside forces convincing them or their own, that they were not, art was not a part of their life. Um, anymore or, or they you know they would keep it a little bit but it wasn't going to be their college major and I've had um, one particular student in mind he he came he ended up coming back and telling me I, I changed my major to graphic design and now I believe he's out in Colorado doing graphic design for a sports related company and and it's just great it's great to hear those things not everybody yeah. leaves being an artist yeah. which is fine or a designer but there are some students that make that connection so well. Um, and it's like an athlete who has to go to the gym every day. You know, when you're creative, you need, you need that in your system every day. Um, I have another student who was pursuing um, the biomedical industry. Now she's creating these gorgeous paintings of <laughs> cell structures and, right. you know, things like that. And so. it is amazing how the arts can weave their way into mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. uh, areas of interest for our kids. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that we are out of time. It has been a pleasure being here with the two of you. Thank you for all that you do every day with our students. Thank so you, again, thank you. Doug thanks, Scott Carol. and Colleen Janino. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. And we'd like to thank you for watching this episode of Highlights from the Hill. And we invite you back for our next episode. And we're going to leave you now with a little video from several events that we've recently attended both by the Visual Arts Department and by the Technology and Engineering Department. Thank you.
Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get an $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.